Hi, Randy. Hi, Anthony. How are you today? Very good. I'm very well. Thank you. Oh, good. Good. Thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. So, yeah, I saw the film last night. Incredible. Are you Amazing. A fan? Very good. Yes, I'm a fan. Um, and yeah, I mean, just tell me, how did you how did you get involved with the project? Well, it was a passion project of mine from for ten years. Um, I, I I guess I guess it was ten years ago that I first um, realized that three of the greatest speeches ever written were by Winston Churchill, and mm-hmm. he wrote and delivered them within a four week span of each other. Huh. And when I did a bit of digging, I found that the reasons for that were no less than the collapse of Europe to Nazi invasion and massive domestic pressure on him to do a peace deal with Hitler. Yeah. Um, and I thought, wow, well, that there's a movie. But I was okay. a little intimidated. I was a little intimidated by the prospect of you know writing words for the master wordsmith. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of set it aside, and then I did Theory of Everything um, and had such a happy experience making that film mm. that I was a little, felt a little bit more courageous. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so I thought, well, I'll roll the dice and, and have a go. So then I wrote, wrote the, uh, the screenplay um, in pretty quick time and then uh, and then put down my pen and put on my producer's hat and thought, okay, yeah. let's make it, let's make it. So I found yeah. working ti- found, found working title with whom I'd made theory of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we sent the script to Gary and uh, Gary responded to the script and then we had to find a director and eventually the, the Joe Wright became available. He'd been making uh, Pan, I think, his last mm. movie. And... Okay. Um, and we had the the component, the core team. Um, so um, it, then things moved very quickly. But now, what? Yeah. What, what was the research process like? Um, uh, I had to strain every sinew to get it right. Um, you always have to get it right when it's historically based, but especially right. with someone like Churchill, because especially in Britain, it's it's sacred ground. Um, and you have to walk very, very carefully and get it right. Um, so uh, a lot of research, so much research that I've even put out a book that, that is a huh. companion, a history book that's now a companion history book uh, to the um, to the movie. Um, hmm. And um, we're very encouraged that all the historians and the academics and even the Churchill family are thrilled by the finished film. So we're they've allowed us to think, you know, that um, that we got it right. That's awesome. Um, what was it like working with Joe Wright? Um, a, a joy uh, and an education. Mm-hmm. Um, I've directed two films myself, and mm-hmm. um, so uh, I kind of know how I would approach any scene, and the way Joe does it is just so different from... from Certainly, how I do it, or I think how most people would approach filming a scene. So, I would say I was there every day of the shoot, and I was, I, you know, I had official reasons to be there, but I was really there as a film fan, just okay. soaking up, just soaking up these uh, these lessons. Now, I know you wear many hats: writer, producer, director, previous films. Is it difficult to view the film from certain? vantage points, like as a director or a writer, is it different? Do you approach the film differently and view it differently that way? Um, kind of, yeah. You have you have um, precious scenes as a writer that as a producer you have to sacrifice and put to the sword. Um, mm-hmm. So that that takes some getting used to, but um, that's when you want to be a hyphenate. Um, you, you have to, and you have to look at it from a different perspective. So favorite favorite scenes, you realize, okay, we're not going to have the budget to do that. We're not going to have time in the schedule. And um, but there's a real positive because then you can really actively, uh, as being the writer as well, come up with a solution. So although you might have to cut a scene, you can come up with a way of taking the idea and putting and seeding it in some other scene. Hmm. So you, so it's 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 a really nice sort of position to be in. Okay. Um, what were some challenges you faced during production? 
Um, the, the challenge is always um, trying to realize the potential in the scene um, um, to give Joe the resources uh, to make the film we all wanted to make. Uh, we, um, uh, you never seem to have enough time with a movie. Um, mm. I think any filmmaker would tell you that. Um, but uh, with all the potential things that can go wrong, we, we had quite a blessed shoot. Um, mm. It was, and I think that was testament to all the pre-planning. The more you, the, the more you plan, the, the luckier, luckier you get. So mm. it wasn't a particularly fraught um, um, shoot, and the, and the mood on the set was very buoyant. People were really captivated by it, even. Even the crew were, were just sort of hanging on, just on the edge of the set, watching all those all the scenes, and were, were moved by it, and and, <laughs> and that's unusual because they're pretty blasé. Mm -hmm. And now seeing Gary uh, dressed up that way, the, you know the sets, the props, the costumes. Did you feel yourself when you were on set? Did you feel like you were actually in Churchill's England? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I, the, the, I mean, especially during, during the House of Parliament scenes where we had 600 um, extras dressed up as parliamentarians and, and Gary seemed so small in the midst of them and he would stand up um, and <laughs> prepare his speech notes and then belt out these speeches in a way that... Because we had no recordings of, 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 um, of, of those speeches in Parliament. They were only recorded years later. Um, hmm. So the, the theatricality that, that um, Gary uses in those scenes are, um, are, we think, much closer to to what what would have been the fireworks delivered on that day mm -hmm. uh, than the, the rather sedate recordings made after the war. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, I felt transported, and it was incredible the experience of it all. Um, what was it like writing for this amazing cast? Um, I, I was writing for the cast in my head initially, uh, of course, because mm. you, you never know who's going to eventually say yes or not. Mm. Um, okay. So, but I was writing for, um, in the case of Winston, I was writing for a, an actor that you would not think would play Winston. I, I wanted whoever mm. we cast to be someone you wouldn't think could play Churchill. <laughs> so that you you get a completely fresh take on the guy and um, really shake the tree in terms of our, our perceptions of him because that was this that's kind of the idea behind the whole film is that you is that he's he's such an icon that he's a he's a figure of myth and <laughs> well, I, you know I wanted to show this this, this three dimensional man um, and uh, who at the core of him was was a belief in this proposition that words can be enlisted to change the world. To me, mm. that's the center of him. That's what he's, mm. he seemed to me to have devoted his entire life doing. Um, mm. So um, then to hear Gary soar with with this with his um, with this rhetoric um, mm. was you know, one of the great pleasures of my life. Wow. Were Were any other actors considered for the role? Um, yeah, but I'm not going to tell you who. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a very short list, and Gary was always at the top of it. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, um, Gary, any... Gary, Gary's the, hmm. you know, I think Gary's the finest actor of his generation. Maybe he's got comp competition from Daniel Day-Lewis, but those two in my book are uh, <laughs> the, sort of, the, the, the living male acting gods. Right, right. So, what do you hope audiences take away from this film? Um, I, uh, the takeaway from uh, I, I would hope was was uh, um, to to make us all aware that you know that that words are precious; they can be devalued, and that if the right ones are chosen and they're and they're wedded to the right idea, um, they can create unity, dissolve differences between people. Yeah. Um, and that we should be very careful with the words we use, especially um, the words our leaders use. Hmm. All right. Now, are there any other historical figures that you plan on writing about? Well, I seem to be in a kind of ridiculous um, uh, frenzy of portraiture. Um, I, I, I'm working on Freddie Mercury. 
um, John Lennon and Yoko Ono, Pope Benedict, Pope Francis, um, uh, who else? Um, um, Catherine the Great. <laughs> so All right. It's quite, a, it's quite a mixed bunch. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you must be, obviously you're fascinated with history and, um, you know, important figures throughout history. Um, I'm curious, but what, in, in, as a writer, what makes for a compelling story in your mind? It's funny. Uh, the, the magnitude of the life is not necessarily indicative of a great story. Mm. For example, I was, I was offered Albert Einstein and... Mm. Uh, so I read this terrific um, biography of Albert Einstein, Man of the Century. I couldn't find the movie in there. I couldn't find the story that moved me. Um, and there's no questioning the, um, the importance of his life and what his gift to humanity. Um, but so you can find someone on a street corner who, who's got the story that you want to tell. Um, so it, it's weird. It's, it's not always the famous iconic figures. Um, with Stephen Hawking... Um, it was only when I read Jane Hawking's um, book um, that somewhere halfway through the book, I turned the page and saw a detail or two that I thought, ah, that's the movie. Mm-hmm. So you have to see, see, even within great lives, you have to find um, something that that conforms to a three-act structure. And, and our mm-hmm. lives, frankly, most lives, frankly, don't. I mean... Mm. We we have what did Scott Fitzgerald say? There's no third act in American life. Um, well, yeah. that's where the the writer has to find one. Okay, interesting. Um, are there any writers uh, who have inspired your craft? Oh, many, oh many, yeah, yeah. As no, I'm, as novelists, playwrights, um, and novelists, mm. people like um, Saul Bellow, the great American writer. Um, uh, John Up, John Updike, um, mm-hmm. um, people like um, Gar- Gabriel Garcia Marquez with his poetry. Um, mm-hmm. Playwrights, Arthur Miller would probably be at the top top of my list. Um, okay. Good. Chekhov, Chekhov uh, Shakespeare, mm-hmm. um, and uh, screenwriters. Um, right. Uh, you know, People like um, David Mamet. Uh, oh yes, Aaron Sorkin's terrific um, with his language. Mm-hmm. Um, Paddy Chayefsky, uh, Orson Welles. Nice. Quite a list. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> are, are there any actors or filmmakers that you haven't worked with that you'd want to in the future? Um, yeah, many. I, I'd love to work with uh, David Fincher. Uh, mm. I'd love to work, love to work with Darren Aronofsky. Nice. Um, to to real modern masters. And I'd love to work with Joe Wright again. Um, he's um, he's he's a kind of living Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> nice. So I'm curious. Um, did you? Socialize, you hang out with the cast and crew when the cameras weren't rolling? Yeah, yeah. Um, Gary Gary um, really only w- appeared to us in the form of Winston Churchill for the whole shoot. And that was for practical reasons. He had to be there four hours before us. So he was already in Win- he was already in, incarnate as Winston by the time we mm-hmm. got there. And then he was, in an hour, he was an hour in makeup at the end of the day, so we'd already gone home. So we didn't huh. see Winston for the whole shoot. Uh, we didn't see Gary for the whole shoot. We, we only saw Winston. Um, but um, I've had the great pleasure of getting to know him and um, become friends with him and, and Ben Mendelsohn, who's a terrific, terrific man, and mm. Kristen Scott Thomas, who's loveliness personified. Um, mm. So we're all and we're all sort of on this uh, publicity tour together. So we're all a bit of a, a, a traveling circus. Oh, that's great. Um, so, yeah, uh, I guess final question. Um, what advice do you have for aspiring uh, screenwriters? Um, my advice is um, make yourself talented just by doing it over and over and over again. Hmm. Talent right. is not something that they do, you inherit, um, mm-hmm. and, you know, um, at birth. Uh, 
um, it's created, and mm. and and you can forge it in in yourself through, through passionate dedication. Mm. Passionate dedication. Hmm. Yeah, Agreed. Funny. All right. Well, wise words, uh, Mr. McCartan. Wise words. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Yeah, and you know what? I I just want to say I really I hope you you win an Oscar for this or at least get a nomination again because it's a really powerful film. The performances as well as the dialogue are phenomenal, and, and you really you all of you knocked it out of the park. No, uh, that's so sweet of you to say that, and um, thank you for your support and and running the story and spreading the word. Sure, I just want to to thank you again, uh, Anthony. Thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate that, too. Thank you, my man. Bye-bye. Great film. Thank you.